So for today, we will uh, be in chapter 5, uh, the serial complications. And uh, again, the microcontroller that we use is the LPC1768 microcontroller, the ARM-based uh, uh, microcontroller. First, uh, we will look at uh, serial communication overview. What is serial communication and why is this important? And we will look at the uh, some of the serial interface which are uh, popular in uh, especially in uh, microcontroller or embedded design. The first one is uh, what we call the serial communication interface or SPI. Next is the integ integrated circuit or I2C uh, bus or I2C. And the last one is the Uniform Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter or in short is uh, UART. There are three kind of communication protocol that we will look at in this uh, chapter. So before we go into the detail what is serial communication, so well, we need to look at what is uh, parallel communication and what is serial communication in uh, Uh, the, the, I mean the meaning of these two uh, communication uh, method. So actually uh, the parallel communication is the easiest communication uh, method uh, between uh, two devices. So uh, we have used this already in uh, in uh, our application in our design before this. So, for example, when we want to connect our microcontroller to the uh, other electronic device, uh, if we want to send the data. Or we want to read the data from uh, from other electronic device. So we use uh, the parallel communication. Okay. Uh, to understand what are these two communication method or technique is by looking at the way uh, we do the communication between. Uh, the microcontroller and uh, other peripherals. Yeah, for example, before this, when we have our microcontroller like this, and uh, we have the output to LED. So for example, we have eight LED. So this is our microcontroller. And when we send data to the outside, to the LED here, what we do is we send the data yeah if the we have eight leds so when we send the data at the pin of the microcontroller we will send all at once so for example the uh, what we send is this is uh let's be pin number one number two three four Five, six, seven, eight. So uh, let's, for example, we send logic one at pin one, logic one, 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 zero, 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 at pin five to eight. So this means that the LED that are connected to pin one, two, three, four, we turn on. 
will be turned on and here will be turned off right this means that we send the data in a parallel because we send all the data all the 8 bits at one time or simultaneously to the LED so this is called the parallel uh, communication so it's the same as when we have two microcontroller this is microcontroller 1 this is microcontroller 2 So it's 8 bit here, the line is 8 bit. So we can send the data at one time simultaneously 8 bit from microcontroller 1 to microcontroller 2. Right? So that is the parallel communication. And this is this is easy because uh, uh, the uh, the data can be easily interpreted or it can be easily read by the second device the receiver here right because uh, the data is easily represented at the uh, as the uh, voltage mm -hmm. level of the of the line here right for example if logic one here means that uh, if in our case is 3.3 volt and logic 0 uh, logic 1 logic 0 is 0 volt so for example if this is LED number 8 so it should be logic 0 and if this is log LED number 1 it should be logic logic 1 right same as here if we have 8 line So zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, right? This is easily interpreted with uh, by by the second device or second microcontroller in this case. But if we use serial communication, it means that we use only one wire. to transfer the data right so what is the advantage of uh, serial communication the advantage of serial communication is of course the the cost of the system right if we use parallel communication we will see that first we need to use many wires many liners here compared to one line for serial communication and that will uh, will increase the cost for operator communication and also you need to use many IO pin here all right so if for example your microcontroller has 20 IO pin if you use uh, 8 of that 20 for uh, communication so you only have 12 pin IO pin left all right so it is a waste yeah to use uh, most of the resources for communication only but if you use serial communication if you have 20 IO pin so you only use one yeah at least one uh, wire for the communication and for the others you can use for for other uh, other purpose or other application so that is the uh, advantage of serial communication but uh, serial communication also has a drawback so what is the drawback of course the the speed of the transmission because 
here you can see that an 8-bit data for example can be transferred all at one time all right so for example if uh, the data here can receive in one microsecond so in one microsecond we send and we can receive in one microsecond here this is should be a time slower as compared to this yeah because we send bit by bit right if we have 8-bit data so we send bit by bit so it is slower as compared to parallel but yes uh, the cost is very important in design so normally in uh, communication when we want to send the data to the outside to the to the other peripheral we will use serial communication instead of parallel communication because this one you will use a lot of resources you will use a lot of uh, the iop in order to uh, communicate okay so that is the uh, the different or the comparison between uh, parallel and serial communication so in this chapter we will look at uh, serial communication how we implement serial communication in a microcontroller but although we have uh, uh, reduced the cost by using serial communication where we uh, only send bit by bit yeah, the data but the problem is that how will be recognized or how the second microcontroller or second device will recognize the the data that we send right for example uh, uh, because we use only one one line here one wire yeah and if you look at the signal in this wire for example yeah when we tap this wire using oscilloscope so let's say for example the uh, our our data is zero zero one one zero one one zero right in bit so in the on the mic my uh, on the oscilloscope what we can see is that something like this zero is yeah this is zero this is uh, one and one one will be like this and another zero is like this and this is one one and another zero is like this but the problem is how this microcontroller or this device know that this is actually one one this is actually zero zero but not zero one all right because if you look at this yeah this can be zero and this can be one this one is zero this can be zero uh, can be can be one or one one or one 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 All right so that is the challenge of using a uh, serial communication So to uh, to overcome this challenge, we need to make sure that this microcontroller and this microcontroller talk in uh, in the same language, okay? talking in the same language, talking to each other using the same language. All right. And in electronic, that language is called a protocol. Right? So we need to make sure that this microcontroller and this microcontroller are talking with the using the same protocol. So there are two, 
two method in uh, implementing the serial communication. The first one we call the synchronous communication and the second one we call the asynchronous communication. The synchronous communication using the clock yeah, to synchronize the uh, communication process and the asynchronous communication we have no clock but we will use the other method yeah, to synchronize uh, between uh, uh, the sender and the receiver. So for the first method, yeah, the synchronous uh, serial communication, the language or the protocol that we use is by using the clock. So for example, if this is the clock, Right. So the data, the previous data, what is the previous data? Uh, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, correct? So this will be represented in the, this is data, this is clock. Okay, so it will be synchronous by the clock where one clock cycle will represent one Okay, where one clock cycle will represent one bit duration or one bit data. Okay, so in this case, we will see that this is the clock. Yeah, if we take or use the uh, uh, positive edge triggered, so this should be zero because the data is zero. And here should be zero because the data here is zero and here should be one and here should be one here should be zero here should be one here should be one and here should be zero now with this uh, method if this is the the transmitter or sender and this is the receiver and Right, using the same clock speed, and the data that we receive is this. So the now the receiver will know already this is zero zero one one zero one one zero according to this clock. Right now the re receiver can understand this data already using the the clock to synchronize the communication. That is the first method. Wow. And this method is called the synchronous communication. Uh, for the synchronous one, this is a, a little bit tricky where we don't have the clock. to synchronize the uh, data transmission. Right, now let's look at the asynchronous communication. Again, by using the same example here, we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Now without the clock, 
how do the the receiver here will understand this right because we have learned just now that if this is the data the problem is that it will uh, transmit like this on the transmission line yeah now how the receiver here know that this is one one but not only one yeah or one 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 yeah so this can be one 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 or one 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 or many one or one one or only one right how the receiver know that the uh, the data that it receive is this one not this one or not this one or not others so in asynchronous simulation we will use the the speed of the transmission to to uh, synchronize the data between the the sender and the receiver right the speed the rate of transmission okay so the rate of transmission will be translated into the duration of the bit itself so for example if you agree yeah that uh, one bit the duration is for example one microsecond so if the data that we receive here is for example 2 microsecond for low like this it means that this is 0 0 and uh, this one okay is high for how how long in this case for example to another 2 microsecond and this is 1 microsecond 1 microsecond so this will be 1 1 and this one, 1 microsecond, of course, this is 0. This is 2 microsecond, should be 1, 1. And this is 1 microsecond, should be, should be 0. Okay, so that will be the communication technique for asynchronous communication. But if uh, we agree, yeah, or we not agree, for example, this one, is slower this one is faster what happened is that slower two times for example means that for this one uh, duration for one bit is two microsecond so it will understand that this one is instead of zero zero but now it is only one bit zero because this is two microsecond and this is two microsecond. It will be, it will be uh, only logic one. But what about this? This one is we cannot recognize already, yeah, because uh, it's changed from zero to one in uh, two microsecond, All right? So got problem in this case. Yeah. So we need to. To agree on the transmission speed between the sender here the transmitter and the receiver here in order to to communicate so that are the uh, basic concept of the uh, communication technique yeah serial communication technique where we have synchronous and asynchronous communication now we will look at uh, the detail of synchronous communication and we have actually uh, many other uh, synchronous communication yeah although we uh, the, the concept is the same but uh, they are uh, different in how we implement these uh, synchronous communication so the first method is 
called the uh, serial peripheral interface or SPI. Right, this is the first method of uh, uh, synchronous simu uh, communication, serial communication. This technique is uh, proposed by Motorola eh, in, uh, I think, uh, 1980s. Right? Uh, but before that, let's look at a little bit the theory here. Yeah, this is uh, what I said before for synchronous serial data, serial communication. So it is synchronous. Uh, synchronized by the clock. Yeah, this is the clock and this is the data. Right? And uh, the concept for synchronous uh, communication is like this, where we have the data line here. All right? This is the master or sometimes we also call node. This is the slip. We are node 2. This is the master, the sender, and this is the receiver. Uh, this is serial data out. This is serial data in. Right, this is serial data in where the master also can receive the data from the from the slave and also send the data using the serial data out. Serial data in is to receive the data and uh, the data is received yeah, through or read. Uh, to the shift register here because uh, remember yeah when we learned a uh, uh, shift register in uh, digital design the in the previous semester uh, and because the data arrive here in uh, series bit by bit so the first bit need to be saved in, the, in this register at the LSB and uh, the next bit that come need to be in the LSB also. So the previous one need to be shifted yeah, to the left, to the next bit. And when the data, a new data come, it will be shifted again to, to, the, to the left. Okay. And this is the clock line. And the clock is uh, generated by the master. Okay. So this is the concept of how uh, the serial communication, the uh, synchronous serial communication is implemented. And this first one is uh, the serial peripheral interface or SPI. And this is how we connect uh, the slave yeah, or peripheral. So peripheral here can be a sensor, can be a display device can be another microcontroller yeah, it depends on uh, what are the uh, referral that we want to use so in this case uh, we can have uh, many many slave and this is the master which is the microcontroller and uh, the connection is like this yeah we we have the clock the common clock connect to all the clock for the slave yeah, same clock and also the serial data data in this is to read the data from the from the slave and it is connected to the common bus yeah? the same bus here and also the serial data out is connected to the common bus as well to the serial data in for the slave you know using the common bus so at one time we will see that only the data, one data can be read from the slave or can be write, can be written to the to the slave. All right. Means that at one time only one slave is allowed to be active. Okay, because for example, if more than one slave is act, uh, are activated, for example. Slave 1 and Slave 2 are activated at the same time. So when we want to read the data from, from this one, so this one also put the data in this line. In this line. So this, there are two data in the same line. In the same line. So this data will be 
interfere each other and it will be corrupted. So to make sure that communication uh, process is uh, can be can be done, uh, we need to activate the slave only one slave at one time. So how to do that is by using another warrior called the uh, this one is slave select or sometimes we call CS a uh, chip select, all right. Uh, and this one is active low. So means that if we send logic zero here, only this one can communicate with this master. If we activate this one, only this one can communicate with the master, all right. So make sure that at one time only one slave is activated. Okay, so we need the the activation line here. So that is the uh, how we implement the SPI uh, communication protocol in uh, uh, in our application. So now, how to use in uh, embed? So first, uh, this is the uh, API function for the SPI in the embed, and also in the embed we have uh, FPI modes. Uh, FPI modes. So FPI mode is uh, is 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 normal. It's it for the uh, typical for the SPI communication where we have uh, four modes uh, in. Uh, in using the SPI protocol in the microcontroller. So the first mode is this, yeah. Uh, this is data and this is the clock. Yeah, this is uh, how we uh, read the data or how we synchronize the clock with the data. Yeah, that is the mode. So for example, mode zero, yeah, means that uh, the free line is zero. Yeah. So to understand this, let's look at uh, this. So in serial communication, we can have something like this. Yeah. If for example, this is the line for data. This is the line for clock. And this is logic zero. And this is logic one. This is logic zero. This is logic one. So we can have something like this. If there is no communication, the line is zero, always zero. And when the data are coming, this is data. Something like this. And the clock will also start it. It is means that for either or for a uh, time that is no communication the line for data and clock are at logic zero this is first first method the second method is that we have data we have clock this also uh, Zero one. The first method, uh, the second method is that when there is no data uh, transmission or no communication, the line for both clock and data will be always one. And when data is coming, yeah, we start the data. And if there is no data, it will go up to one again. And the clock will start to run when there is data. If no data, it will back to to high or logic one. Okay, this is method number two. Okay, so now back to this. 
So we can see that this for this mode 0 and mode 1, we can see that when there is no data or no communication, the line for clock is 0 and the data is also uh, 0. And uh, if for mode 2 and mode 3, if there are there is no communication, we can see that the line is high. Right? Now, what is the difference between mode 0 and mode 1? Mode 0, we can see that the data slope or the time that we read the data is at the rising edge or positive edge of the clock. Means that for mode 0, if this is our clock, And this is our data. We will read the data here. This is zero. This is one. This is one. And uh, let's Change a little bit here. Oops. So that we can differentiate. Okay. And this one will be zero. Mode 0, what about mode 1? Mode 1 also for the idle state yeah, or the, the, the time when there is no communication, the clock will be 0. But when we have communication, we read the data at the falling edge or negative edge of the clock. So when we look at here, if we use mode two, uh, sorry, mode one. Now here, not zero anymore, but one. Here one, but here is zero. Right. So that is the difference between mode zero and mode one. So make sure that we use the same mode between the sender and also the receiver right what about mode 2 mode 2 and mode 3 both yeah the idle uh, when the, uh, we have no communication the clock will be at the high state yeah will be high see high and for mode 2 we will read the data at the falling Falling edge, falling edge, read the data. And for mode 3, we will read the data at the rising edge or positive, positive edge of the clock. So that is the difference between the, between the modes. Uh, we have four modes for uh, SPI communication. So you can use any modes, but make sure that both receiver and the sender using the same mode right and uh, frequency also important yeah the frequency of the communication so it must be the same also yeah if not uh, the receiver will not understand what is the data that is coming yeah uh, now, how do we use uh, SPI in the embed microcontroller? So is th this is the uh, the process, which is uh, quite uh, straightforward, where we can straight away use the uh, the function, the SPI function in the embed, 
And uh, when we look at the embed microcontroller, so let's look at the embed microcontroller again. Uh, so here is the interface, the pin. So we can see that this three is the SPI, yeah. So uh, other than uh, digital I/O here, uh, it can be digital I/O also P5, P6, P7, and we can set this three pin to be a uh, SPI pin also, where we have MOSI. MOSI is uh, master out slip in, yeah. Or in our case, is This yeah. serial data data out yeah. master out is serial data out SDO right master out slave in so this is uh, master master out master out and slave slave in. And uh, we have the master in slave out, which is this one. This one is serial data in, or we also use uh, master in slave out. Uh, this is slave out. And we have another one is the clock. And in this case, is SCK. And we have another one, P11, 12, and 13, also can be used for SPI communication. Meaning that uh, in uh, our microcontroller, we can have up to two SPI communication at one time, at the same time. So you can have uh, this one and this one for uh, SPI communication. Right. Now how to use it? Uh, first is we need to declare the 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 uh, the serial port so how to declare is uh, using this is how we use the spi uh, library spi sp spi api uh, in the embed api spi and this is the name the object name so can be any name in this example we use a uh, ser ser serial port uh, short uh, name for serial port and it is configured as p11 p12 p13 where p12 is mosi master out serial in this one is miso this one is for the for the clock so this is a uh, this one yeah this one 11 12 13 And we need to remember also, we need to have uh, the slave select, or in this case, uh, we call it CS, uh, chip select, same thing. So uh, this is not in, in, in here. So uh, it depends on us, uh, our uh, designer, to choose which one we want to use for for chip select. So where is chip select? Chip select is this one, this line. Okay, so we can use digital out to, to be set for the chip select. Yeah? So in this one, use P14. All right, P14 here for the chip select. And this is how we set the format and the mode of uh, the transmission the uh, to, to use that just use our object name here the name that we set for the serial communication dot format and it this it is the size of your data it can be 8 bit can be 10 bit can be 12 bit can be 16 bit or 32 bit all right and uh, here is the mode and this example is mode 0 so if you want to use mode 1 so you just change to to 1 here change to one here and it 
will be mode 1. Right? So here also, if you want to transmit, your data is 10 bit, for example. You, so you use 1, 0, 10 bit. Right? And this is the frequency. And by default, the frequency of the SPI is 1 megahertz. Yeah? So you can go to up to 4 megahertz. Right? So this is the frequency. So to set, again, your object name, in this case, yeah, you, is SER. So SER serial port dot frequency. And this is... Uh, uh, one megahertz, yeah, and uh, we set the chip select to be zero. So in this case, yeah, in this case, uh, because we only have one chip select, means that only one peripheral is connected to our microcontroller. And uh, when we want to send the data, just use dot write, yeah, the right, the right. API, the right function. And this is the, the data that we want to send. This is the uh, ASCII character A, right? So this is the step for sending the data to the, uh, from the microcontroller to, to the uh, peripheral. Okay, so in the program, so this is how we write the code. Yeah, first, of course, we need to include embed.h and this is how we set uh, which one is our serial communication port, SPI port. And uh, in this case, we select P11, 12, 13 to be this. Yeah, and we have one uh, variable here using char data type. Yeah, the name is switch word. Uh, this is the format. We set the format. And this is the frequency. We set the frequency of the transmission. And uh, this is the data that we want to send. Uh, 41, which is A. 41. And this one we send. Dot write. We send. Send. And we wait 5 microseconds. And we send another one. For 5. Uh, this is character. This is not B, actually. Uh, let's change this. This is a character E. Uh, this is E. 45 is E, yeah? Uh, in X, uh, S key. And we send, and we wait. And because this is in the, in the while one loop, so it will be repeated. Right, means that this program is very simple where we only send A and the next one is we send E. So when we look at the uh, in the on the oscilloscope, yeah, so we will see something like this. So this is the clock, and because we use mode uh, mode zero, so we can see that when there is no data. The line is zero for the clock and also for the data is zero and we can see that look at the stroke here this should be zero yeah zero this should be uh, here one and this is zero 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 and the last one should be should be one for which is 41 actually yeah, this is 4, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 4, 1, yeah, 4, 1. And this is uh, 4, 5. Again, this is 0, 1, 0, 0, 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1, 4, 5, which is E. Right, this is E, this is E, character, yeah. And... Uh, if we use logic analyzer, uh, we can see also here, yeah, this is A, this is E, right? Okay, that is uh, how we send the data using uh, SPI protocol. And now, what if we want to receive 
the data from the from the slave or from the peripheral. So there is a API function also. Uh, the function is SPI slave. Yeah. So our uh, we can set our microcontroller to be slave, and uh, we can use this all function. So this is how we do it. We set we set SPI slave, yeah, and uh, this slave can be this, yeah. We need to include this, the slave or uh, select, select or chip select in the in the list also. But for the master, you don't have to uh, list the slave uh, because for the master you can have many slave right but for the slave you have only one one chip select so must be included in this uh, list also and the format yeah eight zero same as the sending here right so if you, you want to connect uh, for example you use two microcontroller so one is set to be a master and the second one is set to be a slave so make sure that you use the same format here if 8 bit if you uh, master is 8 bit so the slave must be 8 bit also and uh, this is mode must be the same also this is a uh, frequency and this is how we read yeah we read to a variable so this is a variable and the function is dot read. Let's look at this uh, uh, another example where we have two microcontroller. The first one is set to be a master, and the second one is set to be a slave. And this demonstration is to demonstrate how we connect to uh, microcontroller and we communicate using the SPI protocol and uh, the setting for the first and the second microcontroller is the same where we have uh, two press button here connected to P5 and P6 and we have two LED here connected to P26 and P25 and here also the same, also the same, and we connect using the uh, SPI protocol. And if we set this one as a master, so we can see that master out is this line eh, from here to here. And uh, slave in is, yeah, master in is this line from the slave to the master. And the clock is from the master, so this is the clock. And the chip select also generated from the master. This is the chip select. And what we want to do in this uh, example is that uh, very easy. Where when we press this button IP one here, so it will turn on uh, this LED. If we turn on or we, when we press IP2, it will turn on this LED. If we press both, it will turn on here. Means that we need to send the switch condition through through this communication line. So same thing, when we press here, this one, this will be turned on. If we press this one, this one will be turned on. And when we press both, both here will be turned on again means that we need to read the switch condition from here and send to this line, this line and output here so that is uh, the uh, the things that we want to want to do in this case so this is the program yeah where we set this uh, the, the 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 master this one to be a master so this is how we set p11 p12 p13 be a master 
yeah 11 12 13 master and red led out is p25 p25 is red led p26 is uh, green led so the name using the digital out and we have one uh, chip select cs p14 p14 cs right and we have digital in p5 ip1 ip1 we have ip2 p6 ip2 p6 and we have two variable here this is for uh, to save the condition of the of the switch this is to receive the condition of the switch from other uh, from the from the from the second microcontroller which is the slave yeah so uh in this case we try to send uh uh value the condition of the switch uh, which is stored in the in the uh switch words yeah? but before that we have the switch word set to instead of zero zero we just uh, have this uh, to make it look uh, nice uh, to demonstrate how the SPI is working so we in uh, a switch word what we do is we set to be a0 yeah switch word whole a0 so a0 in uh, in hexadecimal uh, in binary is this is in hexadecimal so in the binary is 1010 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. okay so and uh, now we read the switch condition ip1 if ip1 is equal to 1 or press uh, in this case if press so of course this should be equal to 1 if we press so if press uh, now the switch would so the switch would here this variable is always this value meaning that we always yeah, if press so we need to always this value means that we will have this when we all we will have this yeah, our new switch word will hold this value and when we send we will send this yeah this is when uh, to send yeah to send dot write yeah this one this one is to send the the value of switch word so when we send this means that we send this to to the data line but if ip2 is pressed if ip2 is pressed so what happened is that we will all switch with, with 0 2 meaning that if ip2 is pressed so what we do is 0 a which is uh, sorry a0 1010 we all with number 2 So we will have 1010 So this value will be sent through the line. So remember, if we press SP1, this value will be sent out. But if we press 
as P2, this value will be sent. Okay. Now what is we press both? But both are pressed. Both are pressed means that this condition also true, this condition also true. So if both are pressed, means that first we all with 0, 1, and then we all again with 2. So if both are pressed, what we do is we have 1, 0, 1, 0, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1. This one is when SP1 press. And at the same time, SP2 also press. So means that you need to always this. So you will have this. So here means that both SP1 and SP2 are pressed. Right, and we send. So it depends on the switch condition. Okay, now uh, forget about this first. Look at the receiving part or the or the uh, the, the slave. So the second microcontroller here, we will set as a slave. So this is how we set as a slave using P11, 12, 13 also. And remember, for the slave, need to include the CS here. Right, which is P14. And again, uh, the LED out here, P25, P26. Switch yeah, here. P5, P6. P5, P6. And uh, now we want to read uh this one is reading the switch so uh ignore this first this one is reading part yeah we uh so reading the switch part which reading this one but we don't don't want to read this one first but we want to read from here so to read from 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 there so we need to check yeah this uh this whether equal to one or not yeah? serial port dot receive equal to one or not if equal to one we read the condition here to the to this variable and uh, here is the output to the led all right yeah, we output to the LED and this we end with number three, right? To remove the unwanted or to mask, yeah, to mask the uh, data that we read read in, and we check uh, whether equal to one or not. If equal to one, the red LED, red LED, uh is one means that we turn on the red LED. So for example, if we re receive, yeah, remember the receive data from the serial line is this, yeah, RECD variable, RECD VAL is the receive variable. So for example, if the data that we receive is one zero one zero 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 one means that sp1 from the first or from the master is pressed right so we need to interpret this data so what we do is that we end with number three which is zero 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 
one one, right? Because only this two bit is meaningful. The rest is not, uh, not used. Yeah. So if we end, we will have zero 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 one. All right. Which is number one. So if this is one, so red LED will be turned on. The red LED will be turned on. But if it is two, the green LED will be turned on. So two means here, if our, the data that we receive is one zero means that we have one zero here or we have two so if this is two so the grill led will be turned on but if we receive three means that the data that come is this on uh, a zero a3, yeah. If we receive A3, so we will have one one here means that three. So if we have three, means that this red LED and green LED are both are turned on one one, right? Now the the question is why we have why we have A in front, right? So this is to de demonstrate how we mask the, the data, right? Means that if, for example, yeah, we want to use only these two bit because one time we, yeah, this is very important when you do the, uh, the, the communication, the serial communication. So when you send the data, Normally, you send more than one bit, of course, and in this case, it's eight bit, for example, right? Eight bit. So, if you look at this eight bit, bit number zero, number one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. So we will send all of the data here, but the bit that we want to look at is actually this two bit only. All right. So that why, that is why we need to preserve this two bit. And the others we need to filter out. That is called mask. Yeah, this one is uh, has been asked you. Yeah, has been asked in the test, right? Mask means that this one we end with zero 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 one one, right? So anything end with this will filter out this this part and we preserve this part so for example when we receive the data yeah when we receive the data so maybe sometimes this data is corrupted it can be one here all right but this one is still okay Right. So if we test with this, then we will will we will be never we will never get the the correct one, right? Because this one is corrected already. But if we filter out, yeah, the data that is unwanted here, and preserve the one that we want, then we can uh, able to to get the correct data
all right so that's why we we end with number three and to remove this part here we end number three and that's that is why in the at the sending part we have this a0 eh, to demonstrate that we can filter out this this a so in uh, in your application you can have zero zero here right you can have zero zero this is just to demonstrate that when you send uh, anything here all right and uh, the number that you want to send is only the two bit uh, the least sig least significant two bit uh, bit number zero and bit number one only and at the receiving end you can end with number three to remove the the other uh, six bit out uh. all right just like this yeah when you end with number three means that this one is will be cleared to zero and this two will preserve uh, the original data and after that you can easily test the value test with one test with two and test with three